that life evolved over the ages is clear from the changes we've made in the beasts and vegetables, but also from the record in the rocks. The fossil evidence speaks to us unambiguously of creatures that were once present in enormous numbers and that have now vanished utterly. There are far more species that have become extinct than exist today. They're the terminated experiments in evolution. These guys, for example, the trilobites, appeared 600 million years ago. They were around for 300 million years. They're all gone. There's none left. But in those old rocks, there are no fossils of people or cattle. We've evolved only recently. Evolution is a fact, not a theory. It really happened. If you take a look at Darwin, you see a case where it was so tempting to say, I find a watch. It requires a watchmaker. Watches do not spontaneously self-assemble. And now I find a squid or a bacterium. It is much more intricately and exquisitely put together than a watch. Here, too, there must have been a creator. It's very natural. But what Darwin pointed out is that there is a perfectly reasonable process, which is inevitable, which will create enormous, exquisite order out of chaos given enough time. If we thought the universe was only 6,000 years old, there is not enough time, and evolution is nonsense. But if, as in fact is now definitively true, the solar system and the Earth are four and a half billion years old, billion years old, then there's plenty of time for evolution, and our sense that order means creator is wrong. Finally, you can say, look, you can go back as far as you want, but somehow the stuff of the universe had to come from somewhere, and isn't that what God did? But that's only true if the universe was created. If the universe was always here, if the universe was infinitely old, then there's nothing for a creator to do. Most of us would be surprised to hear that the universe is going to end one day. We expect the universe to go on forever into the future. Why do we have the idea that it doesn't go on forever into the past? I'm not saying I know the answer to this. This is one of the deepest questions. We do not know the answer. We simply have to keep an open mind. All of us, philosophers, scientists, religious people, no one in fact knows. Let's take a closer look at who our ancestors were. A simple chemical circumstance led to one of the great moments in the history of our planet. There were many kinds of molecules in the primordial soup. Some were attracted to water on one side and repelled by it on the other. This drove them together into a tiny enclosed spherical shell, like a soap bubble, which protected the interior. Within the bubble, the ancestors of DNA found a home and the first cell arose. It took hundreds of millions of years for tiny plants to evolve, giving off oxygen. But that branch didn't lead to us. Bacteria that could breathe oxygen took over a billion more years to evolve. From a naked nucleus, a cell developed with a nucleus inside. Some of these amoeba-like forms led eventually to plants. Others produced colonies with inside and outside cells performing different functions, becoming a polyp attached to the ocean floor, filtering food from the water, and evolving little tentacles to direct food into a primitive mouth. This humble ancestor of ours also led to spiny-skinned, armored animals with internal organs including our cousin, the starfish. But we don't come from starfish. About 550 million years ago, filter feeders evolved gill slits, which were more efficient at straining food particles from the water. One evolutionary branch led to acorn worms. Another led to a creature which swam freely in the larval stage, but as an adult was still firmly anchored to the ocean floor. Some became living hollow tubes, but others retained the larval forms at the life cycle, 
and became free-swimming adults with something like a backbone. Our ancestors now, 500 million years ago, were jawless, filter-feeding fish, a little like lampreys. Gradually, those tiny fish evolved, eyes and jaws. Fish then began to eat one another. If you could swim fast, you survived. If you had jaws to eat with, you could now use your gills to breathe the oxygen in the water. This is the way modern fish arose. During the summer, some swamps and lakes dried up, so some fish evolved a primitive lung to breathe air until the rains came. Their brains were getting bigger. If the rains didn't come, it was handy to be able to pull yourself along to the next swamp. That was a very important adaptation. The first amphibians evolved, still with a fish-like tail. Amphibians, like fish, laid their eggs in water where they were easily eaten. But then a splendid new invention came along, the hard-shelled egg laid on the land where there were as yet no predators. Reptiles and turtles go back to those days. Many of the reptiles hatched on land never returned to the waters. Some became the dinosaurs. One line of dinosaurs developed feathers useful for short flights. Today, the only living descendants of the dinosaurs are the birds. The great dinosaurs evolved along another branch. Some were the largest flesh eaters ever to walk the land. But 65 million years ago, they all mysteriously perished. Meanwhile, the forerunners of the dinosaurs were also evolving in a different direction. Small, scurrying creatures with the young growing inside the mother's body. After the extinction of the dinosaurs, many different forms developed. The young were very immature at birth in the marsupials, the wombat, for example, and in the mammals. The young had to be taught how to survive. The brain grew larger still. Something like a shrew was the ancestor of all the mammals. One line took to the trees, developing dexterity, stereo vision, larger brains, and a curiosity about their environment. Some became baboons. But that's not the line to us. Apes and humans have a recent common ancestor. Bone for bone, muscle for muscle, molecule for molecule. There are almost no important differences between apes and humans. Unlike the chimpanzee, our ancestors walked upright, freeing their hands to poke and fix and experiment. We got smarter we began to talk. Many collateral branches of the human family became extinct in the last few million years. We, with our brains in our hands, are the survivors. There's an unbroken thread that stretches from those first cells to us.